Russia has improved Iranian Shahids. Now, they fly lower, quieter, and harder to shoot down. Ukrainian soldiers spill hard truth about ruthless kamikaze drones. They were four Shahids in the air acoustically, but we hit two of them. Two anti-aircraft guns, two Brownings, and one PKT were firing. The reality is, everything's hard to shoot down now, everything. There are no more easy targets like the Shahids from a year ago. Russia isn't just launching more Shahids. They've seriously upgraded them. What changed? And is there a way to stop these predators? You'll find out in a moment. But first, let's remind ourselves what Ukrainian gunners are up against. A Shahed is a kamikaze drone, a one-way UAV that can travel up to 1,000 kilometers to blow itself up on impact. It used to carry a fragmentation explosive warhead weighing up to 50 kilograms. The nose is super thin, made of composite material, so it deforms easily. Even a light hit is enough to set it off. Some of the new variants now carry warheads increased from 45 kilograms to 90 kilograms. These drones are mostly used for strikes on border towns or frontline cities. But now Russia is also fitting them with thermobaric elements and shaped charges. Thermobaric payloads don't just explode, they literally burn the air around the target. How does that work? Before we go further, hit like to help others learn about the danger these fragile-looking drones carry. Thank you. Effect. It really does burn the air and sets fires. There are no shrapnel marks on walls at impact sites, just signs of a fireball. The first blast spreads a fuel-air mix as a cloud. A second blast, milliseconds later, ignites it. The pressure wave flattens buildings. As for shape charges, one kilogram of that kind of explosive can punch through 400 millimeters of homogeneous armor. But Russia isn't aiming shaheds at armored vehicles, so why use shaped charges? The answer is grim. To make sure civilians inside their homes don't survive, these charges can punch through concrete just like they do tank armor. Still, all this wouldn't have mattered, because until recently, only about 6% of shaheds actually reached their targets. The rest were either shot down or went location lost. What does that mean? From the outside, it looks like this. A Shahed loses orientation and crashes once it runs out of fuel. That's the effect of Ukrainian electronic warfare, EW jamming. But now the success rate has climbed to around 16%, nearly tripled. In some attacks, almost 50% of Shaheds managed to get past Ukrainian air defenses. So what changed? Let's look inside the fiberglass and carbon fiber beast. These are receivers, four of them in this case. That's the navigation block. That silver box you see is the device trying to counter our EW systems. Shaheds navigate via GPS GLONASS satellites. EW systems jam those frequencies, basically flooding them with radio noise. Imagine turning on a vacuum cleaner in the middle of a phone call. The drone loses its bearings, circles aimlessly, then crashes. But new Shahids come equipped with 8 to 12 antennas. For high-value targets, they even get a 16-element array, making it much harder for EW to disrupt them. On top of that, newer models have a memory module that stores the route. So even if GPS is jammed, they keep going. Recently, Ukraine even discovered Shahids fitted with a camera, a direct radio control module, and machine vision. The camera is the eye. The onboard computer is the brain. It analyzes the visual data to recognize a bridge, a rooftop, or another structure and steers toward it. No GPS needed. It can even identify which target to hit without coordinates. So this new Shahed is no longer just a flying bomb like it used to be. It's now a fully autonomous attack platform capable of striking without external control. This might be the kind of high-tech warfare science fiction warned us about. So how can people defend themselves from these soulless killers? First, subscribe to our channel, because we break down how smart weapons are really used in war. And second, when the machines get smarter, people need to stick together, not just for oxytocin. But the problem isn't just about technology. Now they've changed tactics. Before, they used to fly low. Now they're flying above three kilometers. Just a reminder, Browning M2, which until recently was considered an effective Shahed killer, has a max ceiling of only 1,800 to 2,200 meters. You can find our full video about this American machine gun on the channel, so we won't get into the details here. Guns like the DSK or PKT have even lower range ceilings, but now these buzzing flying mopeds are flying higher, maneuvering, dodging like boxers. That means hundreds of mobile teams with machine guns and spotlights in the back of pickups just aren't cutting it anymore. Trying to shoot down a Shahed with a machine gun is like trying to hit a satellite with a slingshot. So what's the fix? 
One option is longer range systems that Ukraine's already using. For example, the Stinger ManPads has a ceiling of about 3.8 kilometers and is already in service with mobile air defense teams. And then there's this little guy, the Soviet-made Strela 10. This vehicle is meant to shoot down anything flying. No clue how old it is, but it's definitely older than me. Fires 120 millimeter missiles. Range is five kilometers. Ceiling is three to 3.5 kilometers. But here's the issue. Shaheds aren't hot fighter jets. They're relatively cold and slow. The engine is too small to light up like a star on infrared. So sometimes a heat seeking missile just doesn't lock on. That's why a better solution is light anti-aircraft guns, like 23mm or 25mm autocannons. These guns don't just shoot at sound anymore. They're often hooked up to thermal imagers or small radars for better aiming. You'll see them mounted on pickups, trailers, or light trucks, like this old ZU-23-2. One of the most effective Shahed killers is the German-made self-propelled Gepard system. Its Eurlikon cannons have a max ceiling of 4 kilometers, but there are even more long-range options. Ukraine's also been using Vampire Air Defense Systems, which launch APKWS, Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System, Guided Rockets. These are basically 70 millimeter hydro rockets upgraded with a semi-active laser guidance module. With this upgrade, the rocket rides a laser beam all the way to the target, so it's nearly impossible to fool. Fire! Come on, come on. Got it. Under earlier agreements, Ukraine was supposed to receive 20,000 APKWS rockets specifically to fight Sheheds. But then, Trump changed the game. APKWS rockets have longer range and higher ceiling than light autocannons, but all these small caliber systems share the same weakness. You still need to see the Shahed before you can hit it. And if the drone is flying too high, that's a problem. In that case, heavier systems come into play. NASAMs, Iris-T, even Patriots. These rely on radar guidance, so they're extremely accurate. But the missiles they use cost many times more than a single Shahed. Of course, when a Shahed is headed for a critical target, Ukrainians have no choice but to fire off those expensive scarce missiles. The real punch in the gut is when there's no point in doing so, because Russia sometimes launches a wave of Shaheds where only one or two actually carry warheads, just to exhaust Ukraine's air defense. To shoot down Shaheds, Ukraine is now using combat aviation fighters, attack aircraft, and helicopters. In this footage, a Ukrainian Mi-17 helicopter flies parallel to the drone and shoots it down with machine gun fire. The same thing is done by a Ukrainian Mi-8, and Ukrainian Mi-24 pilots are just as effective. Here, a Ukrainian MiG-29 takes out a Shahed in the night sky with an R-73 missile. Even F-16s are now joining the Shahed hunt. Yes, chasing a Shahed in a fighter jet is like racing a Ferrari after a turtle. It's a painfully slow target. It might look strange at first glance, but it's still cheaper than using a $1 million missile. Still, even though Shaheds don't carry any air-to-air -air weapons, they pose a threat to pilots. That's because the debris from a downed drone can damage an aircraft or get sucked into the engine. That's likely what happened with a Ukrainian F-16 recently. At the time this video was being made, the official investigation hadn't yet been released. So, in a situation where there aren't enough missiles to cover every threat and machine guns can't always reach, one solution has stood out. Interceptor drones, or anti-air drones. These kinds of shots are still rare. This is the Sting, the first Ukrainian purpose-built anti-aircraft drone already set for mass production. And it looks like, in a few months, anti-air drones could become the new MVPs of this war. Because this isn't Ukraine's only development in the space. Interceptor drones have already appeared in this war. But until now, they've mostly been used to chase down slow recon UAVs. The usual tactic was a head-on collision or dropping a net. But Shahed-136 flies at around 180 km per hour, so that wasn't fast enough. It seems like Ukraine solved that issue. The Sting can reach speeds up to 280 km per hour. But speed wasn't the only challenge. They also had to make it cheap and build in automatic target guidance. In other words, they're using machine vision. Maybe the guys with the machine gun you saw at the beginning of the video will soon be equipped with these new tools against Shaheds. If so, their work would look like this. Radar, or an operator, detects an enemy drone. Coordinates are sent to the interceptor drone operator. The drone launches to intercept. 
contact. Boom. Of course, battery limitations mean these interceptor drones can't just hover in the sky waiting for targets. The team has to act fast and be spot on. That's probably why some experts believe that other types of aircraft, like Tucano-style attack planes, could be even more effective against Shaheds. This plane is basically a Honda with wings. It's used by dozens of countries for both pilot training and real combat missions. The Tucano was developed in Brazil by Embraer, its main selling points. Simplicity, low cost, and versatility. Plus, these planes can fly at Shahed speeds without risking a stall. Sounds like a solid option. Tell us in the comments. What's better, developing interceptor drones or buying a few dozen Tucanos? Or maybe you have another idea. Drop it below. Right now, we're seriously curious. Thanks for watching.